Hello, I'm Fred Hornaday from Bamboo Batu, and I'm delighted to be presenting to the 2022 Sustainability Conference for Ghana. Today, I'm going to be talking about bamboo and how it can benefit the ecology and economy of Ghana. I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Fred Hornaday. I've been in the bamboo business for about uh, 15, 16 years. Uh, I have the website bamboobatu.com. I've written a few hundred articles about bamboo. I work as a bamboo consultant and bamboo advisor with bamboo growers and producers uh, across the world. I'm from California originally, but currently living in Spain. And I just love bamboo. I'm always excited to work with new bamboo projects and help promote bamboo for everything it can do for the planet. And bamboo can do some amazing things for the planet. It is the earth's fastest growing plant, which makes it a remarkable natural resource to use. Um, as it grows, it produces more oxygen than an equal area of trees. It also captures significant quantities of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere as it grows. And it has hundreds, if not thousands of industrial uses. So there are many benefits, both for the planet and the landscapes as well as benefits for job creation and industrial economic opportunities. Uh, one of the first things if you're planting bamboo is that it can really benefit uh, degraded landscapes. The last thing you want to do is cut down uh, a healthy forest and replace it with bamboo. But bamboo grows very well in areas where the forests have already been lost to either logging or fires or pollution or land uh, landslides, um, any number of reasons why the land could be degraded. And bamboo is an excellent crop to come in and help restore that land. Uh, for one thing, it has these roots, it's just super vigorous roots that really get into the soil and hold it together to prevent erosion. As it binds the soil together, <clears throat> it makes the land more more inviting for other species to come in and uh, take root, and it, help, it can help the whole the whole local habitat to recover, and so that's a, a great benefit in areas that have been destroyed by by mining, for example, or other factors related to climate change, for example. Um, in lots of areas where there's been a lot of pollution, bamboo has great potential for phytoremediation. And that's a big fancy word that basically means that the, the roots of the bamboo can draw the toxins and pollutants out of the soil. I'm working with a project in Nigeria right now where they're studying different species of bamboo and planting it in areas that have been polluted by the local oil industry and exploring uh, which species are most effective and exactly how much of which toxins the, those bamboo species are able to draw from the soil. Uh, so that's a, it's a real exciting project. Um, next thing, one other thing you want to think about is species selection is going to be very important, especially in, um, well, in a country like Ghana, I know it's very dry in the Northern part of the country areas like this. Uh, this is a picture actually from Northern Nigeria. This is some native bamboo species, Oxy Tamantherera abyssinica. Uh, it's also called um, African lowland bamboo. It's easier to say it that way. African lowland bamboo grows in the savanna regions throughout sub-Saharan Africa from Ethiopia to Senegal down to South Africa. And it grows very well with, with very little water and very little rainfall. So in a dry climate, that's a great species to grow. It also has uh, many industrial uses, very useful bamboo species. In the rainier, wetter parts of the country, there are several species of tropical bamboo that would be preferable to grow. Dendrocalamus asper is one of the most commonly grown species for industrial use. Uh, there's a few others here, Dendrocalamus strictus, uh, bambusa. There are many species of bambusa that would grow well in the tropical climate. And so it's good to understand all the different varieties that you could be growing and which ones will be the best for which climate based on, based on the temperatures, the, the precipitation, 
uh, and other factors. Um, when it comes to making products from bamboo, you have a wide range uh, that vary from simple products that don't require any um, processing or manufacturing to other products that are more sophisticated and do require a more, more processing and um, industrial factory capabilities. Bamboo shoots are one of the easiest things to produce. Um, the shoots of many bamboo species, not all bamboo species, but most have edible shoots that can be very nutritious um, when cooked, prepared properly. Um, they're very tasty. Uh, they're easy to grow. There's a very strong demand for bamboo shoots, fresh bamboo shoots. So this is a very easy product to make. Um, and you can also produce these from younger bamboo. You don't have to wait for the bamboo to be eight or 10 years old and super mature, you can start harvesting bamboo shoots at a, at a younger age after maybe just two or three years. Um, where's the picture? The bamboo poles are also very interesting. If you know how to build with them, just waiting for the picture to load here. Sorry about that. Well, bamboo poles, are very exciting to build with if you know what you're doing. Unfortunately, this picture is not showing up, but bamboo construction is an exciting area. Here's some, some processed bamboo, which is much better to work with. It's more standardized. If you're working with the bamboo poles, you just have these long cylinders, these long tubes that are irregular and unpredictable. Um, they're also a bit difficult to ship and transport and not everyone knows how to build um, effectively with just plain bamboo poles. Um, but the processed bamboo, laminated bamboo, like here in the picture, uh, this does require more processing, which is a little bit more sophisticated, but it's got great potential in the building industry because of, you can get the standardized shapes and dimensions. And this is one of the most um, high demand products and the most value added products that you can get from bamboo. And as you're making products like these, you also have lots of byproduct from the bamboo, the smaller pieces and the smaller poles. And with that part of the bamboo, it's good to have another use. And one of the best uses is bamboo charcoal. Uh, charcoal is used widely throughout Africa for heating and cooking, and it's creating great pressure on the forests and resulting in widespread deforestation and using bamboo as an alternative substitute would really protect the forests and save trees and provide a good renewable source of, of charcoal. Uh, biochar is very similar. Uh, it's used as a soil fertilizer and has very many beneficial properties for the soil. And when you produce biochar, you can also earn carbon credits, uh, which is another exciting area in bamboo, another way to make money from the bamboo crop. Uh, bamboo for energy is another interesting area, uh, especially right now with the issues in Russia and the Ukraine. They are, there's a shortage of biomass. And so the bamboo biomass is becoming very interesting for fueling power plants, as well as home home heating units these are especially um, popular and commonly used in europe bamboo paper is another is another product um, vast areas of forest are cut down every year to make toilet paper and that is a real shame bamboo grows so much faster than trees and produces great quality paper and that's just another use of bamboo and finally, carbon credits from bamboo. If you're farming bamboo on a large scale, you will be sequestering significant quantities of CO2 into the soil, drawing it out of the, the atmosphere and locking it into the soil. And that's a great benefit. And there are ways to certify and validate that, that carbon sequestration and earn money on that. And that could be potentially very lucrative. So those are a few of the ways that bamboo can help the planet and the country and the economy all at once. And I hope you look into it more. There's great promise from bamboo for the future. And thanks for listening. Bye-bye.